Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, you've had a good Lord's Day and that there's been opportunity for you to reflect on what this day meant for the very first followers of Jesus, the first day in the week when they saw the, the evidence that Jesus had risen from the dead. If you remember the evening of that first Easter, there were two followers of Jesus who were walking away from Jerusalem towards a, a village called Emmaus. And they were troubled in their minds because of what had happened to Jesus. They were a bit confused because they'd heard the stories about him um, having risen from the dead and we're told in Luke's account of this episode that their faces were downcast, they were really quite down in the dumps, but then they were joined by a mysterious stranger who sought to explain to them how the things that had happened to Jesus had actually been predicted in, in the, the Old Testament in the prophecies and how his rising from the dead was a good reason for them to be optimistic about the future. It was when they stopped to have a meal together and this stranger broke bread that they recognised that this was in fact Jesus and so they went back to, to Jerusalem to share the news with the other followers of the Lord. And it's my hope and, and my prayer that tonight as we gather together in our homes, of course, separated necessarily, but joined together with this aspiration that we will experience something of the presence of the risen Lord. I'd like to focus just for a moment as we go into prayer on a verse from a psalm which says may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us that your ways may be known on earth your salvation among all nations. Let us pray. God our Father we give thanks for the Easter faith we thank you for everything that the cross says to us of forgiveness, of renewal, of the conquest of the darkness that we experience in life. And we thank you also that it is in the light that shines from the empty tomb that we know all of this and we experience all of this. The darkness around the cross is scattered by the resurrection light to let us know that forgiveness, renewal and optimism for the future is your gift to us as we seek to go forward in faith. So stay with us in these moments that we share together and enable us to know something of that great joy within that was experienced by those who were confronted by Jesus, risen from the dead, renewed in every aspect of his being. We pray this in his name. Amen. This is being recorded on Friday past, uh, friends, and by this time, I will have been inoculated for the second time by the AstraZeneca vaccine. I was given a phone call on Thursday and asked to report to Ogai Town Hall 2pm on Saturday to receive my vaccination. So despite some of the reservations that have been expressed about uh, the vaccine, I think I'm entitled to feel a wee bit more secure in relation to the coronavirus infection. That's one thing which enables us to, to feel more optimistic about the future. We, we've seen the restrictions on our behaviour being 
lifted, as well as a successful rollout of the vaccine. And you know, these are these are encouragements for us as we as we hope and pray that we'll come out of this very challenging time. But there's enough for us also to remain careful with regard to our behaviour. There's enough out there for us to realise that the, the, the infection is, is still around and to all intents and purposes, it's possible, it's necessary for us to be careful in various aspects of our lives. An awful lot of the, the success of the restrictions and indeed the virus, a lot of it de depends on compliance, how willing we are to exercise some discipline in, in relation to our behaviour. It's not the first time, of course, that we've been asked to be aware of, of infection and the difficulties that it can bring into our lives. Now, I remember public health campaigns with slogans like coughs and sneezes spread diseases. That one actually I, I've discovered was actually coined for the 1918 flu epid epidemic in the United States of, of America, but it, it really caught on as you can gather a, a, a catchy phrase, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. And then there was another one that I remember when, when I was at school that said, uh, trap your germs in a handkerchief. That one came to mind a couple of years ago when I was on a train quite near a, a young woman who coughed every 20 minutes, or at least that's the way, the way it, it, it seemed. And you became aware in the process, the, the process of the, the train journey that you were perhaps a wee bit vulnerable. So we've been called upon to be aware in the past of infection and how it can be spread. A lot of, a lot of this depends though on compliance. As I said earlier, how willing we are to exercise discipline in relation to our behaviour. And I think we all know that there's something within us all that, that resists being told what to do. Even in, in areas like, like this, you know, when guidelines are set down, when rules and regulations are established, when laws uh, are made, there's something within us that feels that perhaps maybe this is going to be a bit too far and surely it won't make any difference if I do this or do that. I was listening to a psychologist speaking on the wireless uh, near the beginning of the, the, the pandemic. And he was saying that one of the biggest areas of concern was with people who are normally law abiding and behave, generally speaking, unselfishly, but they think they can bend the rules just a wee bit. And if enough people do this, then that creates an opportunity for the virus, for infection to spread. We really have to be careful with our behaviour at every single level. As you know, there, there have been enough stories going around to us of, of uh, going around that we've heard where people are very, have been acting very sacrificially and with great concern for the health and well-being of, of others. But there have been other stories as well which alert us to a darker side of human behaviour. You know, it's great to hear the good news stories, but it's quite challenging sometimes to hear of ways in which lack of consideration for others is being displayed during this challenging time. A colleague of, of mine 
is involved in a project to set up a memorial garden for victims of COVID-19. It's to be in Pollock Park and uh, a site has been chosen for this. And as a first step forward, it's going to take a year or so to actually have it established, but a, a site has, has been chosen. And as a first step in the project, a plaque was set up as a, a, a memorial to all the lives that have been affected by the, the, the virus. Well, the plaque was stolen. And in a very emotional video, my colleague made a, made a plea really to people who behave in this way. You know, he says, we have a, vi we have a vaccination which can protect us from COVID-19. Where is the virus? Where is the vaccination against behavior such as this? That was a, a, a cry from the heart. And, you know, it, it really does, it is a bit of a wake up call when, when we hear of things like this. I was speaking to a police officer just the, the other day who really finds it very difficult in the normal run of his duties to come up against people who are spitting on you, who are de deliberately coughing in your face. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. You can't be a police officer and work at home. You have to have contact with, with uh, people. And when they're behaving like this, it is very difficult. There is that side of, of human nature that is bewildering in, in many ways. And we can look at other people and we can respond with righteous indignation. But, you know, it's in us all to, to some extent. And it all goes back to the story of Adam and Eve. Now, however you want to take it, it's the story of humankind that was given blessing at every level of human existence, but wasn't satisfied with that and wanted more. And it was felt within humankind that the way forward was not to stick to instructions that God had laid down, but to go in a different path. And the result was chaos. There, were, there was fractured human relationships. The environment was spoiled. The communion with God himself was disrupted. The result of this aspiration to be better, to exceed the standards that had been laid down by God was a fall, a fall away from God and all his goodness. And that attitude is, is persisting. That's where we are today as humankind. And if we had been left to that, then the result would probably have been complete annihilation. But God couldn't leave us in that state. The gospel says that out of his love for us, God sent his son to pay the price for our sin, to enable us to believe that there was a way forward for humankind, which would embrace the pattern of, of Jesus' life and enable us to move towards that day when the qualities that we see in Jesus' life overwhelm the darkness 
and God's kingdom is set up here on earth. God couldn't leave us on our own, to our own devices. He enabled us to go forward into the future with hope. You know, I have a colleague who was in the Virgil Gunti's first charge, and he was contacted by someone uh, who had been a minister in that particular church. And this man said to my friend, do you realize what you're doing here? He said, that, that place nearly destroyed my faith in human nature. And my pal's response was to say, well, apart from the grace of God, I have no faith in human nature. And that in many ways was God's response to the tragedy of humankind. He could not let us be prey to the dark tendencies that we all have. And that's why we have received the gift of our Lord Jesus. There is an old uh, gospel hymn which speaks of a healing stream flowing from Calvary's mountain, a healing stream that brings forgiveness, a healing stream that enables us to believe that we can live our lives according to the pattern of Jesus' life, a healing stream that opens up a experience of, of optimism for the future of humankind. All of that flowing from the grace of God. We're all familiar with that hymn which speaks of the amazing grace of God and how it, when it flows into the life of, of a man, when it flows into the the life of a woman, even the most hopeless case can be raised up. It saves. It's a grace that enables people who feel that they've lost the way to realize that in fact they have been found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And for those who might believe that spiritually, they've gone blind. They're now able to see because of the light that Christ sh shines on human experience. So where is our faith tonight? Yes, there's so much in, in human activity that is noble, that is inspiring, but there's also that other side. And we need help with that, help that can only come to us through our Lord Jesus Christ and his grace. Let's pray. God, our Father, we give thanks that like the two followers of Jesus who journeyed from Jerusalem on the first Easter evening, we can be downcast, we can be, be bewildered, but we thank you that even in those times, there is a Lord can draw near to give us hope through his word, to enable us to believe that there is a way forward for all those who trust in him. So stay with us tonight, wherever we are in our minds and our emotions, in the depths of our being. Take us forward into the unknown future with courage and with hope. We ask a blessing on those who are dear to us, our families, our friends. We pray tonight for all those in authority over us and the decisions that they have to make day by day. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would keep us safe and willing and able, even in the midst of these difficult days, to bear witness to our Lord Jesus, 
for all that he is, for all that he has done for us. The amazing grace that flows from him. And we pray all of this in the name and for the sake of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.